Hey fam, balls deep here again with another video on, Call of Dragons. Today we'll be talking about the commander tier list, we'll be going over each commander and how they fare in term of PvP PV and garrisoning. All these are based on my opinions, if you have different opinions feel free to discuss them in the comments below, and also please don't forget to subscribe. Welcome everyone, now let's begin. In our last video we talked about factions, and what to pick when choosing factions, for this video we'll be dividing the legendary commanders, into four categories, peacekeeping, open field, garrisons and rallying, rating them overall in these categories and giving them overall ratings in terms of versatility, the first thing we'll look at when rating a commander, is how they fare in each of the four mentioned categories, some commanders excel in one part but not the others, Meaning just because they might be placed low on the list doesn't mean they're bad they're just specialized, and like I mentioned before, I am putting them in a list of overall use as a sort of must of have. Before you work out way down as a player while developing your playstyle, I will also be going in depth for each commander and their talents, the most important skills to max and their best pairings, now let's get started. Now I will be ranking them according to, S, A, B, C and D, first let's talk about Lilia, Lilia. Lilia is one of the two VIP commanders, her speciality being, peacekeeping and open field combat. Lilia is the queen of open field, and is a must-have hero for you if you plan on doing a lot of grouped up PvP, due to her insane AoE damage, however I will be placing her in the B tier, as she is not great for rallies or garrisons, because she doesn't have a proper talent tree for it and no synergy skills for those tasks. Next is Nico. Nico is one of the best legendary commanders in the game and a must-have for all players. He has one of the highest single target damage skill and amazing defense break, to back it up. He is amazing in open fields, rallies and peacekeeping, you'll find him almost everywhere except garrisoning of course. Nico will be placed in the A tier. Next up is Husk. Husk is the second VIP commander on this list and one of the best in-game. His skills allow him to be flexed in every place but main speciality is rallies. In late game you will see most rallies having him in the lead. He excel in all PvP fields including garrisoning but not as the primary commander. He is not that good at peacekeeping sadly, but nonetheless he will be in the A tier with Nico. Up next is Thea. Thea is one of the latest commanders in the game before season 2 but in my opinion she is one of the best in the game as a supporting role to almost any commander in any situation. Her skills allow her to maximize the potential of any commander when attacking, whether in open fields or even rallies. The only thing keeping her from the top tier is her third skill. For her third skill to reach full effect it needs flying units to be applied. She is also not good in garrisoning. Nika is up next. Nika is an infantry commander with a top tier damage ability in maximizing the potential of counter-attacking, good peacekeeping skills and tons damage. She will be placed in the B tier however as her uses are limited to mostly peacekeeping and some potential PvP if you can get her in a good range to dish out her massive damage. She is also decent at garrisoning but not as good in rallies. Next up we have Garwood, one of the major legendary commanders. He has heals and damage reduction for days but deals absolutely no damage making him a damage sponge that can take a beating. He's only good for garrisons and in some situations peacekeeping when hunting behemoths and some open field combat if you know how to use utilize him, he will be placed in the C tier. Now it's time for Madeline. Madeline is one of the S tier legendary commander we have on this list as she can be used in almost everywhere. PvP, PV, rallies and garrisoning. She is a, a jack of all trades with amazing skills. Being able to rank tons of damage and dish out counter attack damage in return. I don't have much to say about her except get her as soon as possible, and make sure to max her out as soon as possible. Next up is Emery's and Bakshi as they both serve similar purposes. Calvary in Call of Dragons is not as strong, as their uses are limited to raiding and picking off retreating mages and archers. They do not have much uses outside both these tasks. However they do these two tasks like no other, they will be placed in the C tier. Next up is Indies, outside of gathering and taking forever to max. Also the inability to get her shards outside of the dragon trial. I can't really see much use for her except she's maxed and then used as a backline support unit, and even then it would take a very long time to get her abilities maxed out plus she has zero uses in almost all aspects of the game so we'll give her, her the D tier. Next up we have Kanara. Kanara is another S tier legendary hero on our list today. Kanara is awesome. She does single target damage which is a bit of a bummer but her talents are really good and her PvP tree is fine. 
Her control tree is also awesome and I'd recommend you get her maxed as she's fully committed to PvP and right next to her is another hero that has all skills relevant for PvP combat. Velen. Velen is an amazing mage. He has all skills relevant for battling other players which is what our list is for. Villian is also awesome when mixed with Lilia. Velen the primary has better talents in my opinion but if you use Lilia you can dish out more damage. Now the last two on our list are Free Agar and Sindrion. These are the new heroes on Season 2 but I'm not sure we can rank them yet as they yet to be unlocked. But if we'll be rating them by their skills starting with Free Agar. Free Agar is a flying hero who's also a marksman with long range and when paired with Thea gives you a tanky high range march. A crazy combo in Call of Dragons. She would be awesome in taking out behemoths and great for PvP as she has skill which makes the enemy gain less range during combat so I'll be giving her an S tier based on her skills. The last on our list today on legendary heroes is Sindrion. Sindrion is a rally hero and also a marksman, a medium range hero. Based on his skills he's great for taking on behemoths. Also he's great for fielding but for now we can't tell how good he will be in rallies but he's got good precision and critical strikes. In my opinion we'll keep him in the A tier list. Now I hope you've all enjoyed this video, rating legendary heroes in Call of Dragons. Remember most these are my opinions if you feel any different feels free to comment let discuss them below. Thanks a lot for watching have a nice day fam.